Hi, I'm Daniel Buckner, Product Manager for the Mozilla Add-on Builder. Today, I'll show you how to create a simple add-on for Firefox using the Builder. The Add-on Builder is a web-based development environment for the add-on SDK that allows you to build Firefox add-ons with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Before we start, I should note a major feature of all add-ons created using the Add-on Builder or Add-on SDK, the ability to be installed without restarting Firefox. Let's take a look at how you build a simple add-on with the Add-on Builder. To start, cruise over to the Add-on Builder at builder.addons.mozilla.org. The Add-on Builder uses the same authentication as addons.mozilla.org, so if you have an AMO account already, use those same credentials to log in. If you don't yet have an account on AMO, click the link labeled Get One to create a new account. We already have our AMO account, so let's begin creating our add-on. When you click the Create New Add-on button, you'll be taken to a development environment that features a code editor, a file tree to the left of the page, and a few helpful tools in the editor toolbar. Let's take a quick look at the file structure of the add-on in the file tree before we jump to coding our add-on. The lib directory in the tree will contain all the various JavaScript modules you'll use in your add-on. The majority of your code will live in these modules. The data directory below lib is the place where you'll include any resources your add-on might rely on, such as images, HTML files, or scripts used to interact with web content. Finally, the libraries directory is where you can select the version of the add-on's SDK you wish to use. The latest stable version of the SDK is already selected for you for every new add-on you create. For this simple add-on, that's the only library you'll need. Going back to the lib directory, you can see there's a file called main.js that has been created and opened for us. This is the primary file for any new add-on, and we create it for you by default. Let's start writing some code for our add-on in the main.js file. The add-on we're going to build will allow the user to instantly translate any selected text on the page using Google's Translation API. The first step is accessing the various APIs we'll need from the add-on SDK using the require statement. For those of you who have used a common JS implementation, like Node.js, this will look very familiar. Here we've required the context menu API that we'll need for creating a new context menu item the request API that will allow us to make network requests, and the selection API to give us access to text selections the user makes in the browser. Let's create our new context menu item. We've created a new context menu item, given it a label, and provided a context. The label is the string displayed to the user in the context menu and the context describes when the menu item should be visible. In this case, selection context tells the browser to display the menu item when any text content is selected in the page. We need to define a function that will be called when the menu item is added. This function takes the selected text from the web page and passes it to the onMessage handler. Now that we've created the code to pass the selected text from the web page to our add-on, let's define an onMessage handler to receive it. By providing an onMessage parameter, we are giving the selection API something to execute when a selection occurs. Our code here uses the Google Translation API to translate the text we receive to English and replace the selected text with the translated version. Now that we have our code done, let's make sure to save a version of our add-on. You can save a version by clicking on the Save button. Here you can assign a version number to your work. At this early stage, we suggest you give it a 0.1 version and make a note that this is your first commit of code. While we're at it, let's give our add-on a distinct name. To do this, click the Properties button. In this dialog, we can change the name and provide a short description of what our add-on does. These two bits of metadata are important to the discoverability of your add-on on the Add-on Builder's search page. Looks good. Now we can test our code and see how we did. On our toolbar, we press Test to test our add-on live in the browser. At this point, if you haven't installed the Add-on Builder helper, 
the application will prompt you to do so. The add-on builder helper is an add-on that doesn't require a restart, so there's only a small one-time delay. At this point, our add-on has been created for us and installed. To test, let's navigate to the French translation of the Mozilla Manifesto and select some text. We can now instantly translate the selected text with our add-on. It's important to note that closing the browser will remove any test add-ons installed by the add-on builder. When you're happy with your add-on, you can download it by pressing the download button in the editor toolbar. This will allow you to test your add-on in a more persistent way, share it with others by uploading it to AMO, or offer it to users for download on your own website. That's just a quick look at the add-on builder utilizing the new add-on SDK APIs. As you can see, we were able to build a very useful add-on with a small amount of JavaScript. There's a lot more you can do with the add-on builder and add-on SDK, so we encourage you to take a look, give it a try, and then help make Firefox add-ons even better.